In this demonstration, we'll look at connecting reporting services to a data source. We'll look at utilizing both SQL Server Report Builder and SQL Server Data Tools to create a reporting services report. We'll look at data sources, data source views, tabular reports, as well as deploying reports to an instance of reporting services. So let's go ahead and begin. Microsoft introduced back in Reporting Services 2008, Report Builder 2.0. In 2014, we have Report Builder 3.0. You'll notice that currently I'm connected to an installation of reporting services that has been configured in native mode. What that means is it is not integrated with um, SharePoint. It stands alone. Therefore, in order to access reporting services, I go to my server name reports. Now, you see an icon right here, Report Builder. By clicking that icon, that launches a ClickOnce.net application called Report Builder. Now, I'll go ahead and choose Run, and that installs Report Builder. Now, what Report Builder allows users to do is it provides uh, an excellent means of self-service business intelligence for your power users, your analysts, your, your uh, business analysts. They are able to create their own reports utilizing any data sources that they have access to simply by opening up this click once application in the report builder now the report builder in uh, beginning in 2008 was branded to look like office you notice it appears to be an office application in the look and the feel and it begins with the wizard you know what i'm simply going to walk through the wizard i want to create a new report i'll specify table or matrix and I need to create a new data set. In this data set, I need a data source. What am I connecting to? You know what I'm connecting to? I'm connecting to AdventureWorks. And I'll just call it ADW. And I'll build the connection string in the server name. Provide the name of the server and the database, obviously, is AdventureWorks. And I'll say OK and OK again. Now, I can go ahead and say Next. Now it opens up a query builder. All right, well, cool. All I want to do is I want to grab from the person schema person table, first, middle, last name, and from the human resources employee table, I want to get the job title. And I'll say next. Now, you know what? I want to include row groups for the job title. And then I want to show the first, middle, and last name. And I'll say next. Now, how do I want to show it? Do I want to show it blocked with subtotal, blocked with subtotal above, stepped with subtotal? Do I want to choose expand or collapse columns? You know what? I'm going to leave all the defaults and say next. Now, what type of style? Now it's going to apply formatting, the background. Again, I'll take my defaults and I'll say finish. That creates my report. Well, what happens when I say run? Now it shows the report and how the report will look when run within the browser or gives uh, an idea of how the report will look. Obviously, based upon the browser, Internet Explorer, Firefox, uh, Opera, it, it could look different. Now it shows me here's the report that was created. Within Report Builder, it allows you to first define the data source. Where's the data coming from? Next, define the data set, opening up the query builder if you're using SQL. Then, define the type of look and feel that you want and different options. And I can then go through and continue to make changes within query builder to put the last touches before I deploy this report out to reporting services or to a SharePoint document library. 